Hi guys, welcome to part 2 of my Ram Tiger build. This is a kit which I started a long time ago now, I built it in August I think it was. And I really enjoyed building the kit, it's a great subject, uh, really fun, but I just didn't have the time to finish it back in August. So in this video I'm going to start the painting, the weathering and the diorama base, so that hopefully I can do this kit some justice. This is how I left the kit in the last video, with the main body of the tank and this large um, battering ram piece separate. I started by giving them both a coat of Tamiya Grey Primer and then some fairly heavy panel line pre-shading in black. Normally I wouldn't go for such a strong contrast, but this is going to be covered with a lot of paint. The wheels and tracks were also left separate and they were given a base coat of black as well. The first part of this process was really easy as I applied a light coat of the RAL 8012 red oxide primer. This is from AK Real Colors and I love the way this has come out. It's a really nice, rich color and a lovely matte finish as well. I'm really pleased with the finish on this. It's a shame so much of it will get covered up. I applied the same primer on the inside of the shell as well. Again, most of that won't be seen, but there are parts of it that you can peek through, so I made sure I got good coverage of those parts. At this stage, I also painted the wheels in the primer, and then I took some of Vallejo's metal colours and added polish edges to the wheels and to the uh, guide horns on the track. I spent a long time thinking about the camo scheme for this kit. This is one of those kits where I liked multiple options from the instructions and I had a few ideas of my own. But eventually I decided on some kind of uh, tritonal, so the dark yellow, the red brown and the olive green camo colours. And I wanted some form of splinter pattern to go with that. However, I also wanted my paint job to look a little like the box art in terms of the amount of damage and chipping that it has. Of course, if this vehicle is a battering ram, it's going to have more than a few scratches, and it seems reasonable to think that if this is moving heavy obstacles, then uh, that's going to take the paint off all the way down through the primer to the bare metal. I considered a number of options for this because, of course, we have multiple layers of paint. We have the uh, bare metal colour at the bottom, then some kind of primer colour, perhaps a rust coat as well, then the yellow, and then the two camo colours on top. And potentially any one of those could uh, chip through to the layer below, or multiple layers below. And that seems like quite a lot of hairspray chipping. So what I did is I painted the entire model in uh, silver colour. This was from one of Tamiya's uh, rattle can paints, I think I had this colour for an F1 car or something previously and I had a bit of the paint left so I gave it a base coat of that. On top of that I applied a layer of hairspray, concentrating particularly on the front of the vehicle and then a layer of this dark reddy brown rusty kind of colour which I mixed from Tamiya Acrylics. The reason I didn't use the AK Real Colours here is because I don't think they do very well with hairspray chipping. Uh, they tend to go a bit funny when you expose them to water. A variety of tools were used to chip that rusty colour back to the bare metal. All the time focusing on the direction of travel and starting at that lowest edge there where obstacles would first hit the battering ram. I then did a similar process, coating this again in hairspray, then applying some Tamiya dark yellow, and chipping that back to reveal hopefully both the rusty brown colour and the metal colour as well. I 
And of course, don't do what I did at first here, which is forget there's also an underside to this battering ram that needs to be chipped. I thought the result of that looked okay. It's got the kind of uh, type of scratches that I want and the uh, the right kind of sort of uh, drama at the front there. But of course there was a lot more to add. I didn't want to use masking tape for the other camo colors because I was slightly scared it would pull up the paint given that it's got a layer of hairspray underneath it. So instead I just used this spare piece of wood as a guide for the edge of the uh, splinter camo. So I put down another layer of hairspray and then you can see I have used that wood to outline the green camo areas. Once that was done I filled the gaps in freehand with the airbrush and the same effect here with the dark brown colour. Finally it was a case of chipping back the two camo colours using that latest round of hairspray. So in some cases here we're going back through to the rusty colour at the bottom or even the metal. In other cases we're going through to the yellow. I quite like the result of this at the end, however I did think I could make it a little bit more dramatic and a bit more damaged, so I wanted to add some more metal streaks. And I found the easiest way to do this was to use a cocktail stick, dip it in the metal paint and just streak it up. I know I could use a uh, fine brush for this but for some reason the uh, cocktail stick worked really well. Then of course, since there's the big opening in the front of the vehicle, it would be reasonable to think that some debris would go in there. And so I did some metal streaking in there as well, some metal chipping in there. Again, using the cocktail stick. Once that was done and everything was dry, it was given a coat of VMS HD matte varnish, then a pin wash of sepia oil paint from Abtaidong 502, thinned with odorless thinner, 
And you guys have seen a pin wash before. You can see how it brings out the detail here on the rear deck, on the wheels. And of course on the uh, battering ram case as well. Moving on to the diorama, and there are some really interesting uh, archive photos, reference photos, from Stalingrad, which is where I think I want to base this diorama. Particularly these first two images here of the factories. I think these are original colour images, and you can see the devastation in the background here, this bombed, destroyed, shelled factory, and then a wider angle here of what looks like the same area. All the metal work here, the supporting beams, the fallen down roofs. Same in this image here with the gantries. And particularly this image here of what looks like generators or something. Um, and look at the floor in this image as well. You can't really see the floor. It's so covered in rubble. Um, but there are bits of furniture sticking out from underneath it. But really properly sort of dirt and, and rubble covered floor there. And then in this last image, I think this is the roof here. It's come down. So those images were really helpful references and I spent a bit of time on Thingiverse and a few of the websites finding some 3D models to print to hopefully support this diorama. Here you can see I've got a couple of things. I've got the fuel tank there, a couple of pipes and a generator style device. This was actually developed for a Warhammer game, I think, by um, the creator. I'll put the link in the description. But I think it works quite well for uh, as a sort of generator, generic kind of machinery in a World War II diorama. When these printouts come out of the printer, they are surrounded in um, supports. Once the print has been cured, I just remove those using some tweezers. You can remove them before you cure the print. But then because the resin's still a bit sticky, you tend to get resin everywhere and it's, it's, a, bit, uh, it's a bit messy. And they just break off nicely once it's been cured. I also printed these huge uh, girders. The stuff in the background is just supports. These took a long time to print, mainly because I couldn't lay them down horizontally. My printer's not that big. And of course, in 3D printing with resin printers, it's the height of the object that affects the print time because the layers build up. So I printed a load of these girders. Again, you can see a few little um, sort of nubs there that need to be sanded. This was actually a broken, uh, failed 3D print. Um, I didn't support it properly. I think the pipe collapsed, but it also does look quite useful. It's like a broken off pipe there. So I think I'll do something with that. And I wanted to have this uh, hammer and sickle printed out. I also use my silicon brick wall moulds to make a few brick wall sections. This one here was made with sculptor mould. And you can see here it gives a really nice old texture. Because the sculptor mould is quite thick it doesn't go into all the details of the mould. And it gives this effect of a really uh, damaged, um, old crumbling kind of wall which I really like. Normally I wouldn't recommend sculptor mould for this but I think in this case it works very well. And here it is in comparison to a plaster one. And you can see the plaster, of course, is much more liquidy and it's gone all into all those details. It still looks fine, but it will need some battle damage to make it look how I want it to look. So I took an old wooden frame. This is from the inside of the picture frame that I used for the Lancaster. Put a square of XPS foam in there and started playing around with some layouts. I had this idea of having the generators on a raised concrete platform 
and then basically having brick walls on either side with a narrow road down which the ram tiger would be traveling. Because you'd be able to see them from both sides, I had to take two pieces of brick mold and stick them together, back to back. I also had this styrene uh, H bar, which will be really useful for some ceiling supports. Some of these I used as they are, some of them I abused and twisted and pulled apart and so on. Then really it was just a case of playing around with these until I got something that I thought would be good. I wanted some kind of ceiling up here, like in the reference photos, with those beams going across and then the girders across from those. I used some tin snips to cut out some brass sheet into a kind of a, a plate which would uh, keep these two girders together. Finally I've got a tub of individual bricks and a broken piece of wall. The brick moulds for these were from Diorama Debris, same as the, uh, the wall moulds. Really good quality products. And once I had the layout I wanted it was just a case of getting things into place step by step. So I had the walls here in place and I used some sculptor mould to represent a pile of debris. The reason I put the foam underneath is because they were spare, they were off cuts but they would lighten the diorama because they would mean I would need less sculptor mould. The sculptor mould here also helps to hold the brick walls in place. The great thing is the texture of the sculptor mould, if you don't mix it too thin, does look like sort of general dirt and detritus and debris that could have fallen down. And once it's in place, that's when I could start adding the bricks and parts of the steel girders and so on to represent more of a uh, collapse building effect. Of course I push those bricks into the sculptor mould to, to bond them but also so they don't just look like they're laying on top. The same thing was done on the other side of the road, a bead of sculptor mould to hold the walls in place. There were a couple of straight edge gaps there but they can be easily fixed uh, later on. A couple of 3D printed crates were added as if they'd been abandoned by the defenders of the factory. I wanted the ram tiger to be pushing through some kind of obstacle at the end of the uh, diorama. So I built up a bit of a hill with some foam and then covered the road in sculptor mold. 
Again, the purpose of the foam is simply that uh, it's cheaper than using sculptor mold and it's lighter. Some mini put two part epoxy was used to create some sandbags. This was done by rolling the putty into a sausage and cutting an appropriate shape. To get the texture on the sandbags I found that the grippy area of my craft knife provided a handy little pattern. Next up to properly incorporate the vehicle with the diorama rather than having it floating on top of the ground I covered the tracks in cling film and then really pushed it into the, uh, the still wet sculptor mould. And to enhance that effect even more I could then build a barricade that's currently leaning over as it's been pushed by that ram tiger. So we've got the sheets there of the iron and my sandbags which have now dried, I'm putting in place, but been pushed back by the ram tiger. And of course, while it's still wet, adding some more brick debris. One of the things I noticed, particularly in the back of this image is there seems to be a lot of furniture and machinery and things like that. So I took a sheet of brass and with my tin snips cut out a simple template for a cabinet. The edges are rough but you know this is a bombed out building so you'll have to forgive me. Again using the sculptor mold there as an adhesive. And there we go, there is the base layer. There's going to be much more verticality to this, but I don't want to put that in place yet because, well, A, I'll end up knocking it off with my clumsy hands, but also it's going to be really hard to paint the lower layers if we've got a, an upper layer in place. So that will be added later, but I have left space for the vertical supports to go. I used artist acrylic paint as a kind of shadow coat slash primer coat. I slapped it on over everything, Epoxy, resin, sculptor mold, plaster, foam, I just whacked it over everything. 
and it did a good job of covering it to be fair. For the top of the walls I neatened them up by using some strip styrene and again that was attached with, you guessed it, some sculptor mould. And here is our diorama base completely covered in a black base coat. I haven't shown any of the airbrushing steps but the next step was to just block in the main colours. So as you can see there some grey concrete blocks for the generators nice green colour. I wonder whether to paint them green or not but I thought I wanted something to stand out a bit. All of this is just airbrushed and then another step here with airbrushing the ground with a XF52 flat earth and the brick walls with a ready brown mix. This was all airbrushed even the individual bricks on the ground were airbrushed. A lot of them will be painted over individually but their airbrushing just gives a nice base coat. The individual bricks were painted with Vallejo model colours, in this case saddle brown, orange brown and chocolate brown, so a bit of a theme there. These were just mixed together on a palette, almost randomly really with a bit of water to thin them. The idea being that every brick should have a slightly different shade, even if it doesn't necessarily look like it right now on the camera, that was what I was trying to achieve. For the building on the other side of the road I wanted to go for a slightly different colour palette, a more muted, tan, light yellow kind of uh, brickwork. The base coat here was to me a buff. I think this worked really well, especially alongside the wall which was made from the sculptor mould to give a really old feeling. The small accessories were also painted at this stage. And I attached these two pieces of uh, brass rod to represent some kind of factory pipe work. So that's basically it for the work on the diorama today. But before I go, let me show you the figures that I'm going to add. This is Masterbox's German infantry set, early World War II. These figures have nice poses. They're sort of uh, moving up cautiously. I've got a single sprue with some good detail here for the figures and a single sprue with lots of weaponry here, far more weapons than there are figures. So lots of spares here, lots of options, which is really nice. Here's a couple of them roughly built up. There's clearly a couple of gaps that will need filling. And there are colleagues. I spent a bit of time earlier in the process just figuring out where they would go, but the general idea would be that the figures would be following the ram tiger up, using it for cover, perhaps also a few of the figures advancing through the ruins of the factory. And so guys, that is the end of my ram tiger build for today. This has rapidly become one of my favorite projects. I really enjoyed the combination on the diorama of the XPS foam, the sculptor mold, the, um, the plaster, the 3D printed parts and so on, the styrene sheet. It was a really nice combination of different media and hopefully I selected the right tool for the job each time. I think this is a good example of how 3D printing can help in modeling as well because scratch building things like those generators for example would be well outside my skill range at the moment. Even those pipes I would struggle with a little bit. So uh, yeah, I'm really happy the way this has turned out. In the next video from this series, I will finish the uh, diorama, probably. Um, certainly I'll be doing some more weathering, adding that next layer on top with the roofing and so on, um, and getting those figures built as well. So if you would like to see that, then please remember to hit subscribe if you haven't already. And before I go, it just remains to say thank you to everyone for watching and a special thanks to my Patreon supporters. You can see their names on the screen here. I really enjoy our small Patreon community. Um, I try to post as often as I can, several times a week at least. And uh, it's really good to get feedback from uh, my Patreon supporters and to uh, discuss ideas with them and so on. So thank you very much guys for being part of that. And if you want to join Patreon, then you can find a link in the description below. 
I'm also trying to push my Instagram account a bit more, because I made one a while ago and never really got around to using it. So I am trying to post a few more uh, pictures on there. So guys, thank you very much for watching. Have fun modelling, and I hope to see you in the next video.